Today we're talking about six tasks that you should do every single day that'll help you create and manage a healthy garden that'll provide food for you all season long. And if you can keep up with these six tasks, you're gonna be amazed at the difference you see in your garden, your attitude towards your garden, and how often you actually wanna be in your garden. And let's start off with number one, which is water. Water? R water? I'm not saying you need to water your garden every single day. But what I am saying is you need to be checking on your garden every single day. I could water my garden today and 90% of the plants in my garden wouldn't need water tomorrow but 10% of the plants in my garden would need water tomorrow. Use a hand water, just like this one here, just any kind of little hose attachment with a little shower head on it. Really spend some time and get to know the plants in your garden. You're gonna learn more about the plants in your garden by hand watering them than you ever will by setting it on a timer and forgetting about it. Don't get me wrong, 90% of the watering that I do here in my garden, it's all on a timer. I don't really have to worry about it but 10% of the watering that I do here in my garden is I walk around with this thing and I really get to know my plants. Like this plant right here, this is a buttercup squash. Let's, let's, let's call her Bertha. Bertha is gonna need a lot more water than my lettuce does over here. She's much bigger. She's probably pushing a good 10 feet at this point. Bertha here is gonna take up a lot more water than let's say a lettuce plant over there in the corner. She's a lot bigger. She's using a lot more energy. She's growing a lot bigger fruits. Her watering needs are a lot different than a lot of the other plants in the garden. Hi Bertha, are you a thirsty girl? Yes you are. Number two is remove and replant. Especially during this time of year, we have plants that are going to seed, we have the spring crops that are finishing up. We have all these different things within our garden that are kind of getting to the end of their life cycle. As they're getting to the end of their life cycle, you really need to start thinking, what can I put there next? Because you don't want to just leave the dead plant there the rest of the year. That, that's a waste. That's a waste of space. That's a waste of plant. You're going to end up getting weeds growing all over the place. You want to have something ready to go in that spot. Right here, for example, we've got some lettuce that has quite clearly gone to seed. This isn't gonna be any good to us anymore. So there's really not a reason to leave it here. It's just taking up space in the bed that could potentially be growing something else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip this out and plant something else. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've got this empty spot here. I've got a couple drip lines here. So I kind of know how much water this spot's getting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put a couple little holes here and I'm gonna plant some chives. Couple in there, couple in there. All right, let's go ahead and water those in. Take full advantage of succession planting. You wanna plant as much food as you possibly can in the time that you have. It's not just plant in the spring and harvest in the summer and then just kind of let your garden fizzle out throughout the rest of the year. You wanna really take advantage and plant stuff in the middle of the year that you can plant. And if you're planting plants that you wanna have in your garden, you're not gonna to have to worry as much about weeds and different things like that because all of the space in your garden is gonna be taken up by plants that you actually planted there. But while you're replanting, you wanna make sure that you're planting things that are appropriate for the zone you live in and the time of year that you're in. Right now here in Utah, we are in the heat of the summer. So pop quiz, which plant would I least likely want to plant in my garden right now? A, cucumbers, B, broccoli, C, carrots, or D, beets? Go ahead and jump down into the comments and put your answer below. And then later on in this video, I'll answer that question for you. Number three is gonna be harvest. You're gonna hit a time in your gardening season where you have to be harvesting every day or pretty close to every day to kind of get optimal performance out of all of your plants. If you just let those fruits ripen on the vine, it's gonna trigger that plant into thinking its life cycle is over. The whole point of the plant from at least the plant's perspective is the plant wants to grow, grow its fruit and get seed for the next generation of plant. And the way that it does that is as soon as it has a ripe fruit on the plant, it's gonna trigger that plant into saying that its life cycle is done. So if you let that fruit ripen too much on the vine, your plant's gonna stop producing and it's just gonna kind of die off. So what you wanna do is as soon as you have stuff that's ready or relatively ready to harvest, you wanna harvest it. If you're continuously harvesting, you're gonna be triggering those plants to keep producing fruits because they haven't had a viable seed yet. Like this sunburst squash we have right here. I probably could have let it go just a little bit longer, but I don't want to let it go because I don't want the plant to think that it's done. Have you seen how out of control all the weeds are in my garden? You haven't because I don't have any this year. Two years ago was a completely different story. Two years ago, my entire garden was completely overrun by weeds. And the issue that I had is I would just kind of tell myself, I'll do it this weekend or I'll do it next weekend. And next weekend turned into next weekend, turned into next weekend. And it turned into just this giant, sea of weeds that ended up kind of out competing my garden. I used to struggle really bad with weeds and I understand that everybody's situation is different and some gardens are gonna have more than others, but pull weeds every single time you see them if you can. So that way hopefully it's not as big of an issue as it would be if you waited weeks and weeks and weeks to pull them. So every day I come out here and I find any weeds that I can and I pull them the second I see them. And we have elm trees out behind me. So in the spring, those elm trees cover my garden and elm seeds, and those elm seeds turn into little seedlings all over my garden. It's something that I really have to struggle with at the beginning of the year. I gotta pull them 
nonstop. Try not to let him get crazy. Pull him every day if you can. Number five is gonna be inspect, specifically inspecting for pests and disease. If you have a disease or pest issue that is starting to kind of crop up in your garden and you're not paying attention to it and you're not inspecting for it and you're not looking for it, it's something that can really explode into a massive problem and kill your whole garden in a day. But if it's something that you're least aware of and you're seeing it and you're actively working on fixing it, then it's something that you can honestly manage it all season long. For example, right now, I know I have three main pest issues. I'm struggling with squash bugs, I'm struggling with aphids, and I hate to admit this, but the beginning of this season, I had these awesome little butterflies all over my garden and I was so excited. I was like, yes, I got butterflies everywhere, yeah! And then I realized they're not butterflies, they're cabbage moths. So that's my third pest that I'm dealing with this season is cabbage moths. And I've never dealt with them before. This is the first for me and that's why I had no idea what they were. So now that I know what they are, I'm able to kind of start taking steps to fix that. But what I'm doing is every day I'm going through the garden and I know specifically where all my squash bugs are gonna be. They're all gonna be on my squash plants, right? My cucumbers, my squashes, all that stuff. For example, I know that Bertha here, my girl Bertha, she's gonna have a squash bug no matter what, when I come out here. And it's just something that I have to come out here and manually take these squash bugs off. As soon as I look over here at Bertha, I can already see a squash bug. They're everywhere. I, I'm telling you, they are killing me this season. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna grab this squash bug right here, and I'm gonna throw it in this water bottle here, and it's gonna die in there, and I don't even feel bad. But what I do is I come out here every evening no normally and I inspect all of my squash plants, all of my plants. I wanna be looking for all the different squash bugs that I know that I have in there. One really good way to find the squash bugs if you're not seeing as many as you think you have, and this happened to me yesterday. I had a zucchini plant that really was struggling because of squash bugs. And I knew the squash bugs were there, but I couldn't see them all. So what I did is I got my hose, I got my little shower sprayer thing, and I started spraying down there by the roots because what happens is these squash bugs, they're hanging out down by the roots. And as soon as you flood those roots out, they're all gonna come out. And I'm not even kidding. I caught probably 25 squash bugs in a matter of two minutes after I sprayed down those roots. They all came out. So if you do have a squash bug issue, spray down by the roots, they're all gonna come crawling out like little creepy half spider beetle things. I hate them. My hands smell like them. They are the bane of my existence. With the aphids, I'm managing them two separate ways, kind of. First way is just a mixture, just a normal mixture of dish soap and neem. I'm sure you've heard about that mixture before. If not, it's a pretty easy Google search away. That's what I'm doing in one section. In another section, I have a whole bed full of brassicas. In that bed, I have broccoli, cauliflower, all those different things. And there's two plants in there that haven't been doing very well since the start. I kind of had them inside too long. They grew too big in the pot. And then I just kind of tried to put them out here and they, they, never, they never did very well. Those two plants specifically are covered in aphids. But when I look at all the other plants around them, none of those plants have aphids on them. I could go in and pull those plants out or really try to eradicate them off of those plants. But for now, I'm letting them do their thing because I don't care about those two plants anymore. I knew they weren't gonna produce for me anyways. So as long as those aphids are staying on those two plants, and away from all the other plants, they're gonna stay there. I'm not gonna worry about them. But if I wasn't out here every single day keeping tabs on these things, it would take a week and specifically the squash bugs would eradicate my squash. I could use pesticides and get rid of them and do all those things, but right now what I'm doing is working as long as I'm out here doing it. So keep that in mind when you're in your garden. And as for diseased plants, unhealthy plants, all these different things, if you think a plant might have a disease or a section of a plant might have a disease, a leaf of a plant, remove that leaf, remove that branch, remove that piece of the plant that you feel like is diseased, if you feel like the whole plant is diseased, remove it, pull it out of your garden, get rid of it. You don't want those diseases to spread. It's just, it's just a real quick snip, chop, be done with it. I know that it, I know that it just kills us inside to get rid of plants that we worked hard to grow, but it's better than losing half of the rest of your garden to a disease or half or the rest of that type of plant to the same disease, it's not worth it. Just, just get rid of your diseased plants. Keep a really close eye on that. Number six is plant management. And what I mean by that is you have a lot of different plants within your garden that are gonna sprawl out, spread their legs and just kind of encroach on each other's space. Specifically, let's, let's say tomatoes. Look what I found. <laughs> Weeds, I found more weeds. With this tomato specifically here, I wasn't doing this every day. I wasn't controlling the plant or kind of going through and pinning it up where I should and making sure it stayed in the tomato cage. So instead, this branch came all the way out. And it's hard because I need to get a wheelbarrow through here. I need to be able to maneuver through here. This is through my walkway, so I can't have this hanging out over here. At this point, it's too late to kind of pin it back up in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just 
cut this whole branch off. And specifically with tomatoes, if you have branches that are down in the soil, they're gonna be more susceptible to kind of soil-borne diseases, fun funguses, all sorts of different things. So if you have tomato branches that are touching the soil, you wanna be cutting those and pruning it up to where they are above the soil and not touching that. So that way you're not spreading those diseases. Real quick, let's go back to the squash bugs from earlier. The zucchini plant that I told you that I took like 30 of them off of, I don't think it's gonna make it. It might've been too little, too late. This is what squash bugs will do to your plant if you don't take care of the squash bugs fast enough. Plant management honestly kind of took on a whole new meaning this year because this is the first year that we put our arch trellises in our garden. Before this year, we never had them. And even though vertical gardening is like this big, huge, popular thing, most plants don't actually just climb straight up a trellis with no help at all. So every day our melons and our squashes, they're growing like, some of these plants are growing like four or six inches every day. And we have to come out here every day and kind of weave them in and out of the trellis to make sure that they're going up this arch and not just falling over. So the majority of my plant management time this year has honestly been spent just weaving these stems and these vines in and out of these arch trellises to make sure that they're just these nice, big, beautiful vines that are exactly where I want them to be. On top of that, there's a lot of different separate vines that are coming out all over the place and we have to manage those and cut some off and we even trailed some along the ground even though that wasn't the plan in the beginning but it's really a lot of work to get them up and over these trellises but I'm telling you it's worth it I, I absolutely love these trellises these trellises are honestly the best thing that happened to our garden this season and if you're interested in our trellises for yourself go ahead and watch this video right here we go through exactly what we did to build these trellises and honestly they're the biggest bang for your buck as far as giving you more space in your garden to grow more more food for you. P.S. Carrots. It was, it, it was carrots. Carrots do really well in the spring and the fall, not so much in the summer.